Hello everyone, this is Mr. Stamkos, and technically I don't need to make a video today because um, every week I like just have one day off, if that's okay. Um, but I actually wanted to make a video today, and um, I had this video um, idea in my head. I know other people have done it, but I still want to do it, and I'm going to do it now. Um, so I want to compare my top 15 draft rankings to um, Bob McKenzie and TSN's final uh, draft rankings. Now, if this video um, does well, I'll make uh, a part 2 for the top 31, comparing my 15 or I'm 16 to 31 to Bob McKenzie and TSN's top 16 to 31. But we're going to start with top 15 since um, I don't want to go too in-depth for a video that's not going to do well. So. Yeah, starting with number one on Bob McKenzie's draft rankings is Lexi Lafreniere. And if he's not number one on everyone's draft rankings, there is something wrong. So, he is number one for me um, and Bob McKenzie. So, we've got that going for us. And number two is immediately where it gets different. I have Quentin Byfield, but um, it can go either way, honestly. I, I could see Tim Stutzel going to L.A., pretty damn easily and I think in my mock draft I actually have him going to LA yes I do I have my mock draft just up on my wall um, across the room for me so yeah um, Tim Stutzel number two on Bob McKenzie Byfield for me and then Stutzel three and Byfield three on Bob McKenzie's so um, it just intertwines kind of it's just you know flipped positions but um, I don't disagree with Bob McKenzie here with putting Stutzel at two because I think he could very well go to um, above Byfield. Um, and number four is again where we have a little bit of a different opinion. I will be back in a minute. Sorry for that interruption anyway, Ace. But um, number four, um, I have Marco Rossi personally. And this may be a bit high for some people. But he led all junior players in points this year as a 17 turning 18 year old. And I don't care what your argument is. Marco Rossi, no matter what, should be a top five prospect in this draft. Um, but Bob McKenzie all, has him all the way down at seven. I don't agree with that. Um, Jimmy Drysdale, yes, he is the best defenseman in this draft. But even then, I think he's more of a Tyson Berry type player. A guy who can fill in that top four really nicely, be a power play quarterback. But really be a bit of a liability on that defensive um, end. So... I can't put Drysdale at four. Instead, I got Marco Rossi. And number five, um, um, uh, I'm losing my mind. Bob McKenzie has Cole Perfetti at five, and I have Lucas Raymond. Um, I think Lucas Raymond, in the time he did play, he played less than 10 minutes a game. Um, sometimes he played five minutes a game, and he still put up a solid 10 points in 33 games um, or something like that. Yeah, 33 games 10 points for Frolunda which is known for developing their prospects well. Frolunda is a very well known um, place where great Swedish hockey players come from so for him even to be on that team is a good sign um, for him to actually make it at the NHL level and I think that Raymond um, is a surefire prospect. I think he's going to be a great great playmaker a Mitch Marner type of uh, player you know, I'm um, just racking up 80 points a season. I can see it in the future, man. Um, yeah, so, well, he has Perfetti. I got Raymond. I think Raymond's better. Um, and, yeah, so let's move on to number six. So, at number six, Bob McKenzie has Lucas Raymond. But I have Jamie Drysdale at six because even though um, I don't think he's a top five prospect, I think he's definitely a top ten. And I put him at six personally because... Even though his defense isn't the best, he's still very young. He can still learn how to play defense and still put up 60 points a year. Um, honestly, if Jamie Drysdale can fix his defensive issues, he could be a great defender in this NHL, personally. But I think his value is still amazing as the guy who could potentially hit 50 to 60 points um, a season, you know, get tw be a great power play defenseman. And also having a right-handed shot is... Um, still hard to come by um, in the NHL. So, um, Jamie Drysdale, I got him at 6. And moving on to 7, this may be a little bit high for some people, especially Bob McKenzie. But at number 7, he has Marco Rossi, and I have Anton Lundell. And I love Anton Lundell. I actually have him going 6th to Anaheim in my mock draft 
on my wall over there because I think he's a, such a perfect fit for Anaheim. A guy who could replace Ryan Getzlaff, and if not, I know Trevor Zagris is there, but just imagine Zagris and Lundell as your one and two. And even if Lundell doesn't pan out, he'll be a third liner with his defensive play no matter what. He's just so, so defensive mature, and there's really not a spot in that defensive game that, you know, you can point out and say, well, that's not good. And he's also a player who I believe could get 60 points a year. So um, I have him at seven, um, and I really like Anton Lundell. I think he's gonna he is gonna be a surefire NHL player. He may even hop into the NHL as soon as next season, um, depending on what team drafts him. But um, yeah, Anton Lundell is such a great player. And Bob Bob McKenzie has him all the way at 12. I don't know how you have this guy outside your top 10, um, let alone not even 11. But, you know, putting him below Jack Quinn, ugh, I don't like that at all. Um, so, now, yeah, yeah, Anton Lundell, 7. Moving on to number 8, um, I have Alexander Holtz. And if I'm looking here, I don't see Alexander Holtz. Oh, wait, no, he's at 9, never mind. So, not really a big difference here between me and Bob McKenzie's rankings. He has him at 9, I have him at 8, and I think Holtz is like... Um, a watered-down kind of Alex Ovechkin, you know, he's not going to be a dominant goal scorer like Ovechkin is, just fear him on the ice all the time. But I think he could definitely be a guy who could put up 40 to 50 a season um, a few times in his career. He'll definitely be a 30-goal scorer if he reaches his potential. But um, I could personally have him going to the Buffalo Sabres in my mock draft. And I think he would be a great fit for Buffalo, um, playing alongside Eichel, but... Um, yeah, Alexander Holtz is just such a great elite sniper, and he has some good at hockey IQ, and he's also a good passer as well, so he can kind of do everything um, in the offensive zone, and that's what I really like about him, so I have Holtz at number 8, and moving on to number 9, um, again, Bob McKenzie has Alexander Holtz, he had Sanderson at 8, um, but at 9, I got Cole Perfetti, and personally, I'm not the hugest fan of Cole Perfetti, um, I think think uh, quite a lot of mock drafts have him going way too high, like at number five here in Bob McKenzie's. That's too high for a guy like Perfetti. I think Perfetti could be a really, really, really good top six um, center, like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, for example. I think he'd be that type of player. Um, just give me a minute. Sorry for the other interruption. These kids are pretty, pretty dumb. Um, don't hear me making a video in here. But anyways, yeah, I don't think Cole Perfetti... I think Cole Perfetti can max out at like a guy like Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Um, I think that's the type of player he's going to be a guy who could put up 50 to 60 a year um, with the right line mates. But I really don't see all the hype around him personally. Um, but I'm going ninth to Minnesota in my mock draft again. And even though I think he's going to be a good NHL player if he does reach his potential, I don't think he deserves to go top five by any means necessary. So, yeah, now moving on to number 10, and I know it's a rule not to put goalies in your top 10, but this guy is on another level. Yaroslav Askarov is my 10th best prospect, and Bob McKenzie has Jack Quinn here, which is kind of weird. Um, that's way too high for him. I think he could definitely be a 40-goal scorer um, if he reaches that very, very max ceiling, but I don't see it. Um, but Yaroslav Askarov... Um, has drawn um, comparisons to guys like Carey Price, Andre Vasilevsky, um, the next best goalie since Carey Price. There's so much titles going around for uh, Yaroslav Askarov, where with all the hype you give this guy, it's surprising that you don't see him higher. And I know it's because um, of the rule you don't put goalies in the top 10, and if you could, then he would probably be in the top 10, maybe even top 5. And I could definitely see a team like Detroit or Ottawa or New Jersey grabbing a guy like Askarov in the t inside the top 10. Personally, I have him going to Edmonton at number 14, but just because I have him going low in the mock draft doesn't mean I, um, you know, have him, you know, high in my rankings. I think very highly of Yaroslav Askarov. Um, we actually grabbed him in the HLM series, so we'll see how he pans out for us. And, uh, yeah, so... I think that Askarov's going to be a great goalie. So let's move on to number 11. And I have Noel Gundler, who is nowhere to be seen here. I think he's um, somewhere in the 20s on Bob McKenzie's draft rankings. And yes, that is a realistic view for Noel Gundler. It's not out of this world to have him in the 20s. 
because of the issue that comes with him, the consistency, the consistency issue, the work ethic, um, the attitude, um, it's all there. But honestly, I don't like to give attitude and that kind of thing, um, you know, too much uh, as a thing to worry about, like an attitude problem. I don't care about that. I'm looking at the basic skills of these hockey players, and Noel Gundler has that skill. If he can figure out the consistency issues, I think that he could be an elite level player in the NHL, a potential first liner. Um, he could easily be a top 10 talent um, if he re if he gets that figured out, but even then, he wasn't horrible in the Swedish uh, Hockey League. He put up some pretty decent numbers, and um, he could have done even better if um, that work ethic and those consistency issues weren't there. Um, so Noel Gundler, I have at number 11. Um, Askarov is there for Bob McKenzie, but I think uh, Gundler's going to be a great hockey player, and I really hope he does prove everyone wrong. Number 12, this is a guy who's also not in Bob McKenzie's top 15, and um, Seth Jarvis. At number 12, he has Anton Lundell, which is too low in my opinion, but Seth Jarvis, I think the only argument not to put him in the top 15 is his size, and I don't think that's a very viable option anymore. There's too many great NHL players right now that are under 5'11", and Seth Jarvis is 5'10", I believe, and that's fine. That's fine. You don't need to be over 6' to play in today's NHL at all. And Seth Jarvis, a guy who put up basically 100 points in the W... Oh, 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 the WHL this year. I think that he will be great top six guy. Guy can put up 50 to 60. After Seth Jarvis, I'm going to have to figure out the storage, guys. Um, but yeah, Seth Jarvis, I think, is so good. And I personally have him going um, to Florida at number 12. So... That's Seth Jarvis. Let me figure out the storage, and I'll be right back. Hey, guys. I'm back, and I don't know what the hell is eating up all my storage. I know this video is, but this video is not going to be, like, 200 megabytes. It's going to be, like, in, like, 50 or something. But anyways, we're going on to number 13, and Bob McKenzie has this guy at 8, Jake Sanderson. Um, I like Jake Sanderson. I don't hate him. He's not my favorite prospect, though. And I think for a guy like Sanderson, a realistic approach is a fourth defenseman who's putting up 30 goals, um, not 30 goals, 30 points a year. Just, he can do everything right. And I think that's what really appeals to other scouts, a lot of scouts. And I know this is a weak defensive draft. Um, and Sanderson would probably go somewhere closer to the 20s and, like, even, let's say, last year's draft. But um, because of the slim amount of top level defensemen in this draft means that he gets pushed up the rankings and I'm at 13 my mock draft I'm going 10th to Winnipeg because I think Winnipeg's really needing some defense right now um, and Sanderson's a guy who can hop into the NHL in the next three seasons um, and honestly I think he will make the NHL he's going to be a guy who I'm going to see and be like yeah I kind of saw this coming and um, he's not going to just blow anyone away. He's going to be solid, but um, yeah. Overall, not my favorite player, but I'm, I'm at 13. And now moving on to 14 is another guy not in Bob McKenzie's top 15. That's going to be a bit of a trend here for the last two players. Um, and that's Connor Zari. And I know a lot of people have concerns where he it's either make it or break it for him. And even if he does make it, he's probably going to be better suited as a third-line scorer. And that's what really makes people push Connor Zari away. But I think his two-way game um, in Kamloops this year was really good. Um, he's a guy who can put up, you know, probably 40 points a year for you, 40 to 50. He can be okay defensively. And I think he can be a second-line player in the NHL. Um, but even if he is a really good third-line scorer, I think that's still good value. Um, for any of these teams picking here. I personally have them going to Carolina at 13 because I think at that pick for Carolina um, for, from Toronto, like, oh no, they can take a risk on a guy like Zari, just fill out more of that depth, you know? Um, so I think Connor Zari personally, I don't know why everyone hates on him, but I really like Connor Zari. Um, I watched his highlights too before, and he looks really solid in can loops. So that, yeah. Going on to my last prospect now of this top 15, and I have Dylan Holloway, who's not in uh, Bob McKenzie's. He has Dawson Mercer, but not Dylan Holloway. Hendrix Lapierre also, uh, Keaton Gooley. Those are two guys that are too high for my liking. 
But Dylan Holloway is a very, very solid power forward um, coming from University of Wisconsin, I believe, one of the university teams. Um, and I think he put up 19 points this year, and that's really solid still for the type of player he is. He's a guy who's not going to blow you away with points. I would say an NHL av- uh, NHL um, point production for him would be like 30 a year. But he's going to be a guy who's going to be really good on that penalty kill. Um, you know, shut down other people, shut down other teams and stuff. Personally, I have him going 11th to Nashville because I think Nashville does need a little bit more defense in that forward core. But I think that he's gonna, he would be a great, great um uh, you know, shut shut it down, clutch kind of uh, defensive forward in the NHL. And um, that's why I have him in my top 15, uh, rounding it out as well. But, yeah, that's it. That's my top 15 in draft rankings compared to Bob McKenzie's. And if this video does get a good amount of, um, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A good amount of uh, notice, and if, you know, it's decent, you know, it's get something I will do uh, 1631 a part two but um, yeah I just wanted to make this video real quick up today and upload it because it's not too much work for me and um, yeah so thank you guys so much for watching um, Dale Howard Chuck video is up to 3,000 views now and that's insane for me and again if you didn't watch my video I just uploaded a couple hours ago Wayne Gretzky highlight reel is coming pretty soon, um, probably in the next few days. I'm going to say Monday is going to be the day I release it. But uh, yeah, this is Mr. Stamkos, and I'll see you all in the next video. But for now, bye.